This story is called Angel Music. Honor walked to work one morning. Brenda Wells heard the faint sound of a pipe organ as she passed the local cemetery. She thought nothing of the music and continued down Memorial Drive to her small office space which overlooked the river. The cemetery, like so many other local landmarks, held little to no memory for her, as she had only come to Leicestershire as an adult to attend college. It was a warm spring morning the next time she passed the cemetery and heard the organ music. She had left her apartment early, so she had a moment to pause and listen. She thought back to her romantic period music class in freshman year, which was probably the last time she had really listened to classical era compositions. The music could have been Brahms, she thought. Schickslaw's lead was her all-time favorite orchestra piece and she remembered some of his organ chorals distinctly as they were tested for on the final exam. She recalled listening to some of those works dozens of times during the last week of class. As she walked, she paid close attention to the execution. Even to a layperson, it would be obvious the performer was exemplary. When she passed the main gate, she saw two girls playing tag just off the entrance roadway among a few of the taller obelisks. Brenda passed under the gate, curious about the children, who looked about eight or nine years old. Hi, girls. Isn't there school today? She smiled at the pair as she startled them from their game. The girls turned to face her. When she saw their eyes, she instinctively shuddered. Both sets were obviously cataracts. A filmy white bug obscured their irises. We don't go to the public school. The kids make fun of us. Brenda felt sorry for the girls and remembered how terrible children could be to one another. I'm sorry to hear that, said Brenda as the girls came over to her. Where's the music coming from? The girls pointed toward a stone chapel that was blocked from street view by a row of bushes and pines. Strangely, the organ seemed fainter from inside the cemetery. Brenda looked at her watch and knew she had to be on her way, so she thanked the girls and left. The next morning, as Brenda passed the cemetery, the organ was inarguably louder than the day before. She had listened to a few of her older CDs from school the previous night and was sure the organist was playing a Brahms piece. The girls were jumping rope just inside the cemetery gate, and she went in to talk with them again. How's it going, ladies? The girl stopped jumping and greeted her warmly. Hello, ma'am, said the shorter girl, her milky white eyes looking dead in the sunlight. Brenda was concerned the girls might be neglected, so she asked them again about their schooling. Do you go to the Catholic elementary down the road? The girls paused. The delayed manner in which they reacted to her voice made Brenda think that they might both be blind. We don't go to school said the taller child. Brenda figured they were homeschooled. Then who's watching over you? She looked around. The cemetery was empty as she could tell. No one was visiting or cutting the grass. Our angel, the girls replied in near unison. Brenda was confused by what they meant. She thought about the organ that had been continually playing while she visited with them. Who? The organ player? They nodded. Brenda continued. Will they be mad if I pop in and listen? It was already 8.45. She was too curious about the situation, the girls, and the music at that point to worry about being late for work. Angel loves visitors, said the smaller child. Brenda smiled at the girls and walked the path to the chapel. As she approached the stone structure and its big wooden doors, the music seemed to increase in volume and intensity. Brenda's pulse quickened in time with the tune. Her body was consumed by the power of the organ as she nudged one of the heavy doors open. She walked the main aisle, studying the dark interior of the chapel, which seemed much bigger than it had appeared from the outside. The ornate stained glass windows were its only light source, shining mostly on the center interior. The pews were older, a rich dark wood, 
and the carpet was well worn. She could just make out a figure seated at the organ off to the left side of the raised altar area. As the figure continued to play, her heart raced. A sense of foreboding arose within her, but she advanced to the front of the chapel driven by curiosity. The figure didn't seem to notice her care that she had entered, and she couldn't speak up and let him know she was there due to the overwhelming power of the music. Brenda approached the seated figure, who seemed to be enshrouded within a black robe. When she was a few paces away, the music stopped, though the organist didn't immediately reveal himself. Sorry to disturb you. Your playing is beautiful, and... She froze when the hooded figure stood, turning to face her. What she saw could only be described as demonic. A leathery burnt face with red lit eyes. Oh my god! Her shriek was cut short as a long, crooked knife appeared from beneath the robe and drove into her soft center. She gasped and choked on blood. A rivulet crawled down her lip and cheek as she fell to the floor of the chapel, motionless. Brenda slowly faded from the world of the living on that chapel floor, but before she left consciousness, she saw the two girls in the frame of the open door. She watched the hooded figure walk toward them and had enough wits about her to rasp a barely audible warning. The demon reached in its robe as if to draw the knife, but instead revealed a puppy, handing it to one of the girls. Thank you, Angel. The girls were overjoyed at their new toy and returned to the cemetery to play. The door closed behind them, and Brenda's last vision of life was that of the approaching horror.